Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for joining us today. We are looking into our crystal ball and making predictions for some of the less transparent brands that will be featured at this year's Basel World Trade Show. Now, of course, some companies give us press kits, embargo dates, and release times. They give us the pictures in advance. They give us everything you would ever want to know about the new models so we can launch the second those embargoes expire. And then some companies, well, let's just say they're better poker players than others. And among those who can hold the cards closest to the vest, Patek Philippe is the ace. So let's take a quick look back at Basel World 2017, talk about discontinued references for the year to come, and then let's guess, see what might be coming from the Stern family in 2018. Okay, a quick look back at Basel World 2017. It's important to remember that there were so many new references, we've got to pick our favorites. So let's talk about the most important references. A major new steel debut, a variation on an older watch, but the 5961A launched in a black dial variant. We first saw the watch, basically the annual calendar flyback chronograph, in steel on a bracelet in 2014, but it was the white dial for that entire span. The new black dial made the watch a little bit sportier, a little bit more aggressive, some might even say more casual and more versatile. So an important reference, this is the 010 version of the 5961A. It was accompanied by a new Calatrava, a variation on a theme. We first saw the 5000 in 1993, then we saw the 6000 in 2005, and it was with us until last year when the 37mm 6000 became the 6006 in 39mm. Still a micro rotor caliber 240, still a quirky off-center small second style, still a radial date, but with a revised dial to better wear its larger dimensions and a larger 39mm case for contemporary tastes. And evolution of a favorite, but that also goes for the 5170P. Although the reference has been with us for the better part of a decade now, we had never seen a Platinum 5170. Well, Patek Philippe launched its first last year, and it was worth the wait. A spectacular Platinum case with a gradient blue dial with baguette-style diamond indices, like the previous year's 40th anniversary Nautilus collection, the 5170 is stunning, subtle, masculine, and memorable. If it is the end of the 5170 reference, and some have speculated that it will be, what a send-off. Otherwise, if you can, you have the means, and there's still space on the waiting list, put your name down. You will not be disappointed. That was one of my personal favorites of the year. The 5320G was a little bit surprising. A vintage-inspired automatic perpetual calendar. It was maybe a bit offbeat with unique fluted bezel and lugs, a cream colored gloss lacquer dial and syringe style hands with applied numerals. It was polarizing, it was controversial, it was much discussed, and yes, it has been very successful commercially. So Terry Stern chose well, a provocative reference, a memorable one, and evidently a highly desirable one. That was the 5320G perpetual calendar. Now the 5372P was a bit unexpected. In general, one Patek Philippe perpetual calendar chronograph will succeed its predecessor, but the 5270 remained in production for the year as the mono pusher split seconds perpetual calendar 5372 arrived and ran alongside it as well as alongside the traditional 5204 split seconds perpetual calendar a different look with a blue or a salmon dial in a platinum case a lot of folks don't quite know where that one fits, whether it's in addition to or ultimately intended to be a successor for a current model. We'll have some insight into that in a moment. But the Aquanaut, the Aquanaut 20th anniversary family probably stole the show. First, there was the 5168G. So this is a model that was 42 millimeters, white gold, spectacular blue dial, and a composite rubber polymer strap to match an aggressive sporting piece that in some ways was a little bit more discreet, more subtle than the 40th anniversary Nautilus 5711P had been with its anniversary 1976 to 2016 dial, which was controversial, and its baguette indices, which on a sports watch was controversial. The 5168, by comparison, was immediately back-ordered and wait-listed with very little controversy. The Nautilus sold well, as did the Aquanaut, but the Aquanaut sold without so much as a murmur of objection to the design. 
That was not the signature piece of the anniversary collection, though. That honor goes to the Advanced Research Travel Time Aquanaut 5650G. 500 pieces with a spectacular, flexible spring-based travel time complication, hand-finished, exquisitely constructed, and quite frankly, a little bit controversial in that it exposed half the dial. Nevertheless, it was a supreme triumph of both artistry and engineering as it cut the complication, the travel time complication of the 5164 roughly by two thirds in terms of component count. Does it look a little bit like the Terminator with half his flesh shorn? Just a bit. It has that mecha menace look to it, but all the same, memorable for it. Now let's talk about what will be discontinued. We know because it's already leaked to the online forums. So first and foremost, that 5961A010, the black dial that came out last year, that's gone. It becomes a one-year stainless steel Patek Philippe complication. And if that sounds like a collector's watch and an investment piece, mm-hmm, you're right, it is. Get one while you can. And, for that matter, if you own the old 5961A, you may want to hold, because that has also been discontinued. Will we see a new model? It's possible, but as of right now, both of the steel 5960s are dead. Now, the 5207-700P, it is the second version of the 5207 that came out in 2008. This one has the mahogany obsidian inserts in its flanks and a gorgeous sort of cocoa gold guilloche dial, a spectacular piece that combines a minute repeater, an instantaneous change perpetual calendar, and a tourbillon. It's always been a low volume application piece since its original iteration. We don't know if it's dead altogether or if we will see a new version. What we do know is that the current model, the sole model, will be discontinued. Now the 5208P001, this is a watch that came out in 2011 and rapidly gained fame as a classical grand complication, a chronograph perpetual calendar, and a minute repeater, exquisitely crafted in platinum, famously worn by Terry Stern himself, and perhaps apocryphally, Vladimir Putin as well. This is a memorable watch that actually formed the basis for an epic grossing only watch iteration. The original 5208P will be dead, so put in your application now if you want one. Perhaps even more surprising is that the 5200G, a watch that debuted in 2013, will be discontinued. Both of the current versions, the silver dial and the blue, will be phased out. This is part of the Gondolo family and arguably the flagship of the Gondolo family. I would be shocked if the reference is completely discontinued, but the current versions will be no more. Finally, all three golden ellipse reference 3738s will be phased out. I am sure these will be replaced because now we roll into our predictions and prognostications. A more relevant golden ellipse, I'm calling it here because this is the 50th anniversary of the original 1968 reference 3548, so named golden ellipse because of its golden ratio aspect ratio. If you look, it's actually approximately 1.618 times as tall as it is wide, so not necessarily a golden watch, but a golden section watch. It has been ever since the first. I believe we are going to see a newer, more relevant men's golden ellipse that will hopefully take the high-end non-round watch dollar, because if there's anything Cartier and Jager Lecoultre have proven, and Richard Mille for that matter, there's money to be made selling modern non-round watches if you can reach your audience. They're out there, and I think that's what the Golden Ellipse will become moving forward. Now, the 5270R, a watch that's been in the catalog as the 5270 generally since 2011, is being discontinued. The 5270 probably won't die after less than a decade of offering, but the R version, at least as it currently stands with its current dial iteration and current case metal, will be phased out. Will we see a new one? I'm not sure. All I can say is, if you're on the wait list for the current model, you're probably going to want to stay there. And it's also important to remember that we're looking at another anniversary this year, lower in profile, but 20 years since the first complicated Nautilus, the 3710 1A of 1998. Now that was a power reserve, relatively simple, but the combination of the unusual, the Roman numeral dial and the power reserve with the historic first, the first complicated Nautilus, means that we may see a look back, not in anger, but in nostalgia. I wouldn't be shocked, given how little changed in the Nautilus collection, 
for the, for the 40th anniversary, if we see a new Nautilus model this year that's perhaps a tribute to the original Power Reserve. Eminently possible, but so too is the 65th birthday boy. That's right, 65 years since the very first automatic Patek Philippe, the reference 2526. Patek Philippe pays more attention to its history, including its distant history than most brands, rarely issuing a true re-edition or tribute watch, often paying homage. That's what I think we might see this year. I wouldn't be shocked if we saw some sort of 2526 homage. It would be great if it came with an enamel dial like the original, and if they really want to push the limits, and we know Patek sees opportunities and seizes them because they just raised the price of the Nautilus, 5711, as prices have gone nuts on the aftermarket, I would not be shocked if we saw some sort of enamel dial 2526 tribute watch with a steel case. I, I believe that could happen. Uh, finally, let's take a look at the 5235 regulator. The technology in that watch is the future of Patek Philippe, not just in that regulator model, but in the whole model line. Being able to make the silicon hairspring, they've mastered that, but the silicon escapement, they're still working on serializing that. The 5235 which was shown about two and a half years before delivery started and then had its delivery slow during the production run because of the complication of regulating it with those high-tech components, they've got to figure that out. They've got to amortize their investment in that tooling and that process before they can roll it out across the line. So I wouldn't be shocked if we see the regulator extended with a new dial or a new case metal. I wouldn't be shocked to see rose gold. I wouldn't be shocked to see something like a platinum limited edition. I wouldn't even be shocked if they played with the unconventional and went with either tantalum or palladium, but I do think we'll see another version of the 5235 before that model is done, and we need to, because that technology is the future of Patek. They've got to get it completely right before they can scale it. Finally, consider the grand exhibition. We're talking about Basel, but last July was a huge occasion for Patek Philippe novelties. We saw a whole host of new watches, including some that I believe were simply too expensive to develop for the number of units produced in the New York exhibition. Now, the most extravagant was the 5531 enamel dial world time minute repeater. There's no way they put all the money into engineering that to only make 10 pieces. I believe we'll see some sort of serious, and they patented part of the mechanism, so patents were issued for that watch. I think we'll see a 5531 that is not like the New York edition, a different dial, perhaps a different case metal. I do think it will become still an application piece, but a regular offering in the catalog. I also think that the 5522A pilot's watch, remember the steel time-only pilot's watch from New York, will be serialized as a precious metal watch to offer a more elemental and lower-priced permanent running mate to the 5524G travel time Calatrava pilot's watch. So I believe the 5522 will come back as a precious metal, likely white gold edition. So those are my guesses, guys. If you're watching this after the fact, sound off in the description. Tell me how I did. And if you are not subscribed and you want to get more great coverage of Basel 2018, as well as our regular programming, please subscribe to our channel, Watchbox Studios. My crew and I would really appreciate it. Thanks again. Have a great Basel.